Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to talk about the package Blur Hash. Blur Hash gives us the possibility to create placeholder images from a small hash. Out of this hash we create a placeholder image, waits till we receive our image that we download from a source and if that image appears we will display the real image. And in this uh, video I will have the opportunity to show you how to implement Blur Hash, how you create a placeholder like that. I created for that already a image gallery um, and with that we will take a look how blur hash is working and how you can use it for your advantage. Let us begin by explaining why we will use blur hash. Designers are usually not really happy with loading spinners in general so everything that indicates loading is a stressful situation for customers and users. So usually they try to impl implement something that's getting better. Today we're using for example skeletons everywhere. So we see already this application before uh, it really is there, so without data. So how does this work in your application? First we need an image, any source image will do. If we upload that for example on blur hash, we can see that um, we get a little string. And this little string is the representation of that blurry image. And the benefit here is that we can now use a package like for example Flutter Blur Hash and this package will encode this hash and will display an image out of that. And this image is a representation of color and close to the structure of the real image. But now enough of the dry explanation, let's get into code. If we start now today, we work with the boilerplate that I created in GitHub repository. So if you come to the GitHub repository that I created for this project and go to the branch boilerplate, you will find exactly the starting position where we have the pubspec.yaml that has already some uh, dependencies included. We will also add the two dependencies that we have flutter blur hash for the widget that we can use to create the blur hash out of the box and blur hash so that we can create the hash out of the code. What we also have in our boilerplate is a main.dart and the main.dart is already connected with the shared preferences which gets a string list called blur hashes which is at the beginning empty. But what we also have is we have already set up a provider package and if we take a look inside of the material app we can see that there is a change notifier provider already in place which provides us the app provider change notifier. So if we jump into the home screen, we can see here that I created a basic scaffold with a consumer widget inside that takes the information from a provider and gives us the access to the app provider. And inside of here, we have a custom scroll view with a sliver app bar and a sliver padding, which then contains a grid with a placeholder at the moment. How does that look like? Exactly like that. So we have a list that we, is scrollable with a lot of placeholders at the moment inside. And it is inside of a sliver that you can see that the app bar is going away. So now if I click on that plus icon, I already introduced that we can upload an image to Firestore. So if I click for example to that here, we can see nothing happens, but if we take a look into our console, you can see down in the uh, debug console that we already upload the image to Firebase storage. And I decided to have bigger images so that you can see the benefits of the blur hash even better. Also what we have in our um, foundation or in our boilerplate is we have created already a model called blur image. And blur image is just a representation of our images that we want to show and it contains with three different attributes. Hash, which will contain our blur hash, the download URL, so where we can find the URL or the file later, and the file name. And the file name key is for us a key that we can use later. And as you can see, we have already a from JSON and to JSON method to transfer this object into a JSON because we want to save it later in our shared preferences. And if you know, in shared preferences, you can't save an object, but you can save a JSON string. Now I want to add here in our app provider the first time something that we can have a list of different blur images. So what I will do is I create a variable here inside. This is a private variable because we want to set a notifier later so that all the dependencies that depend on this app provider will rebuild if something inside here is changing. So if we take a look at app provider, it will rebuild because of the consumer up here, this part completely new so that everything inside will change correctly. So what I want to do is whenever here a blur image is inside, I want to notify all the listeners so that the home screen 
at this point is getting rebuilt. So for that, we will first create a gather method. And this gather method is just there to return us the object itself without accessing this part directly. Why is that important, you ask? Well, if we would make that public, that variable, then we could change this list without notify the listeners and our state would not change. So the next thing that we have to do is after we are finished with the upload, we have to create a blur image instance and add that to the list that we have already created. In this method upload image, we receive a file image and what we do is we create a new universal ID, so a unique ID just for that image. And then we upload the whole thing to our Firebase storage that I created earlier. Then I will update, uh, upload the file and on complete we react by getting the download URL. Now the next step is we want to create our blur hash. So create blur hash. And how do we do that? First, we have to get the bytes of that image. So we read the bytes with this read as bytes method. Now, after we have received the bytes, we can ask the blur hash package to encode as a hash. Be mindful, this method should usually be used in a non-blocking way. This one is not blocking the state because it takes quite some time to um, run this hash. It could be also separated to another server or in Firebase functions so that this creates us the hash and we can just use the hash at the end in the local device. But now for this demonstration, I will just create the hash inside of here. Now we create the blur image down here. And as you can see, we got the download URL from up here where we get from the reference, the download URL. And also what we get is the file name and the blur hash that we created seconds ago. And now what I want to do is I want to add blur image to our list that we already created. So now whenever we upload an image, we add that to this list of blur images. But now we have to notify our listeners, so our, for in that case, our consumer, to rebuild our state of the stateless widget of home screen. So for that, I will call notify listeners. So that means whenever this is running through, we notify our listeners and here the consumer is re-triggered as a build. And that means we can use this app provider here to call something here inside. So instead of just returning here a placeholder, we want to return something more. So for that, I will create uh, write this method completely out and I, what we want to return is a blur hash. And the blur hash is now a widget that gets provided by the package flutter blur hash. And now we want to separate the hash that we want to decode. This comes now from our app provider blur images index which is just the number of element that I want to show inside of the list that we created earlier in our app provider. And now here we want to have the blur image dot hash. And for the image itself, we want to provide the blur image dot download URL because the image wants to have the resource where to download the image. And after that, we can separate all the other things, but I will just add the box fit to cover. So whenever I upload now an image, this provider is getting rebuilt. We return this blur hash at that position and now we get some errors because the child count is eight, but we have actually the child count of the blur images dot length. So as you can see, the build is re-triggered, everything works, but because we don't have any element inside of that blur images, we got nothing. If I press now on that plus icon, we can see here different images that I already prepared for today. And now we want to start with the coffee. And now comes the point where I said it could take a while um, if you make the blur hash encoding on the device of uh, your users. So I highly recommend you bring that onto a server that takes that task and whenever it is ready, it returns it. But as you can see now, the upload is done, the blur hash is created and after some seconds, we already see our image. That's it, more or less. We created our blur hash with that. That would be a bit too easy for us, right? We have already the shared preference in, uh, preferences in place. So how can we do it that when we start up the app, we show a lot of different blur images here. So for this, we have to go to our app provider and create an app provider constructor for that. We come the first time into this app provider, we want to create all the blur images that are inside of the string list that we retrieve from 
the shared preferences. And because our app provider can't be asynchronous, we can't access the shared preferences here. So, but what we can do is we can get a parameter that will be a list of strings, string list. And this string list we have to map because for every string in that list, we want to receive a JSON out of the shared preferences. And we have to decode this JSON. That means we take the JSON and serialize it to a map between string and dynamic because that is what JSON decode returns. And now from this decoded JSON, what we want to return is a blur image from JSON. And what we inside is the JSON itself and return that. If you have never seen this with that from JSON and to JSON, I already created a video where I do that with you together. I will link that up in the info box. And now we collect that into list because now we can set this and this should work. But now how do we get the image actually inside of our shared preferences, right? So inside of here where we create our different parts and we add already our blur image, we also have to add it to our shared preferences. To do so, we have to encode the JSON again. So for that, we will take our image, image string, and we say JSON encode blur image that we created up here. Uh, from that object, we want to get a JSON now. Now we want to access our shared preferences and now we want to access that shared preferences by get string list. And the key is blur hashes. The problem could be that this blur hash list is empty. So what I will do is I will add with that two question marks. I say if this part here is null, we return this empty list. And now we can use that list at the image string that we created. We have to set prefs dot set string list of blur hashes with the value of the list. So that means whenever we have a new image, we add it to the list again. This part here seems to be having its own logic and is just representing for one thing. I will create an own method for that. And of course, we don't have to wait for this process to run because notify listeners can already work as soon as the blur images are added to the list. So with that, we know exactly where we are. But the problem is now we save everything, but at the moment we only um, would like to execute this part here, but it will be always empty because when we initialize the app provider, we will see we get here in the main.dart at the moment an error. Inside of my app then, I will just have the string list with where we, call, uh, where we pass by that list. And what I want to do is I want to use it here in the app provider. So I added now four images. And if I now restart the application with the shared preferences all set, it will get now the information out of the shared preferences, show us the hash codes, and you can see the nice little images which fit to the, the image itself, and then getting replaced by the actual image. And that is the idea of Blur Hash. All right, so we managed it. We implemented Blur Hash. We can see it now in our image gallery and it works perfectly fine. You are now ready to use Blur Hash to your advantage and I want to really see what you have done with it. Do you know in a similar package like Blur Hash that I should uh, introduce here more? So please leave it down in the comments below. I would really appreciate that. Additionally, don't forget as always to subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up with the good content that we create and give us a like for that video. Up here, you find the two videos that you are interested in and now have a great day.